I need to make a garden tour video next. Today is a pig fence update. Because so far my pig fencing has been working out great. And it's the thing I was most nervous about whenever I was getting into this. This is my first time raising pigs. I picked up three feeder pigs from a local farm and I'm raising them out in a paddock that's about three quarters of an acre. So they're definitely to a size where they could do whatever they want to do. But I've never had one of them break out of the fence and I don't think they want to. Like they, I think they kind of understand what the fence is about. So even if one of them did get out, they're extremely easy to control with food. I've got more chickens than I should have and I've got a surplus of eggs. So these guys get some boiled eggs every day. Now up the hill a little ways, I've got a small paddock built with uh, hog panels. So like right now, if I wanted them to be up there so I could close them in, this should be all we need to do is bring out some eggs or bring out any food really. So let's see if we can do that real quick. Give them a sniff. Couple jingles. Yep, they're interested. Just dump them out there and let them do their thing. So over on the other side is my gate. So if I swing that closed right now, I've got them contained. So each end of this paddock is a hog panel wide and it's three hog panels long. So 16 feet by 48 feet. I made it so big because I was very nervous about the electric fence and if I needed to lock them up full time and just grow them out right here, then I wanted to have room to feel like I could do that. My original plan was to always feed them inside of this paddock. That way they felt comfortable in here and it was easy to get them back in here. But what I found is whenever you feed them in one place over and over, it gets very gross very quick. Actually, if I turn around behind me, this is where I've been feeding them lately and I'm kind of done with this area. It's already been resting for a day or two and I won't be returning to here. Over here is an area I'd used previously. You get the idea. So the weather this year has kind of been cycles between extreme heat and really heavy rains. And whenever that feed starts getting sour, it's just, it's so gross. So the battles I've had with them getting stinky have always been about the feed. It's never been about the manure. And if we turn back around, you'll see one of the reasons I think. I've got a whole flock of chickens that hangs out with the pigs all the time. Just like you're seeing right now, I think these guys scratch up and clean the, the feed that's left over. And then they also scratch through their manure and get a lot of the grain that doesn't get digested. I think I kind of got lucky that I had, I had young chickens and young pigs at the same time and they kind of grew up together and were comfortable around one another. Okay, back to our fence, back to containing pigs. The hog panel paddock has worked out great. I originally had two wires of electric fencing inside of this paddock for, for training them to the fence, but I just removed that yesterday because the weeds had grown up in here really bad and it was hard to weed eat around that electric wire, so I just went ahead and pulled it all out. So for a fence energizer, I just bought a couple of these cheap ones. They're having themselves a crowing battle right now, so we'll just let them get on with it for a few minutes. Okay, back to our fence energizer. I'm just using one of these cheap ones off of Amazon, a five mile. It is a 0.1 joule charger. It has been working great. This guy's gonna come over and bite my, these guys do get a little bitey sometimes. So this is a 0.1 joule charger, pretty small charger, but it's not really pushing much, right? It's running, yeah, yeah the fence is, uh... yeah, fix the fence yesterday, bud. Yeah, it's two strands of 14 gauge wire that circle the, the three quarters of an acre paddock. So I'm glad to see the fence is working again because it really wasn't for a while. I got very lazy. I wasn't keeping the fence clear. They were pushing dirt up against it. And I really just got lazy because they seemed to respect it whether it was hot or not. I think they've got plenty of room and aren't really looking to expand their territory. 
But the exact same scenario happened a couple days ago where one of them was up against the fence reaching out to, to try and sniff at me. And I realized that he was pushing on the fence and totally understood that the fence wasn't hot anymore. So, so that was why I spent some time yesterday getting it cleared and hot again, which it should have been the whole time. So I've used a pretty huge variety of insulators, including these orange lock jaws, which work pretty good. The main advantage to these is they can go on in any, that's a hot wire. I just got, uh, just rode the lightning there for a minute. But yeah, these are great because they can go on in any orientation and get you out of a lot of weird situations. Because my soil here is extremely rocky. This is all just what the pigs dug up. So you'll see I didn't exactly get the posts in straight. A lot of them would go in and twist. Driving T-posts here was a nightmare. So these have been useful, but the downside is they're expensive and they also pop off pretty easy. But in a straight situation like this, where they're not under any strain, seem to work out really good. So these plastic step-in posts have been extremely useful and more durable than I expected, especially since I was driving them into, uh, into rocky soil. These little things are cheap and it's very easy to get the wire in and out of the different slots. So they've done a great job on this whole path up, up toward their paddock. So widely spaced T posts with step in posts in between would make for a pretty good setup in my opinion. So I wasn't starting from scratch. I had some existing fencing. I've moved down here to the far corner of their paddock. So house is there and where we just were is up on the hill right up this way. So I had this old barbed wire fence and if I had it to do over, I would just pull out the barbed wire while I was putting in the electric. And I'm probably gonna go back and do that this winter whenever I'm clearing more of this land, which is really one of the main reasons I got the pigs. I'm trying to get this area of my property under control and pigs seemed like the best option for doing it with cheap fencing. So the barbed wire comes down to the corner I established, but it keeps going here. And I've got more old overgrown pasture to use in the future if I want to. But the, the part I carved out is already too much for three pigs. So I jumped inside the fence here. You can see at this corner, they do come down here quite a bit. This is one of the first places that gets evening shade. So they'll hang out down here sometimes. But when they get fired up and excited, it's hilarious to watch them run the fence line. So I'm getting some traffic down this way, but they haven't really done much as far as clearing the weeds from the interior. But that's okay, they're doing a pretty good job down by the house. Okay, so coming up from this corner is a new fence line that I put in. I used T-posts wherever I thought I needed them and you even used some trees like this little sycamore. I have plans to cut this guy down eventually. So in the meantime, it's working as a fence post. So most of the insulators on this line are just the standard T-post insulators and haven't had any problems out of them. But if we look back toward the corner, I've got kind of a crazy setup here. You might notice that T-post is sideways and it needed to be that way for that corner kit, that big orange T-post corner kit, but I still wanted to use it as an insulator point. So when I put the orange ones on the side, they worked fine, but they kept sliding upward. So I had to put those yellow ones in there just to stop the orange ones from sliding up. This is also where I decided to put the tensioners. I would definitely suggest tensioners if your runs are gonna be long at all. And they were pretty helpful during installation. So I used these orange guys on the back side of these tensioners as well. And that's worked out pretty good. This T-post corner kit has worked pretty good, but I kind of hate how it's that super bright orange. I found out after I bought it that they also make it in black or green or something that's not freaking orange. It definitely catches the eye. I'm not sure why I find the orange more annoying than yellow, but I do for some reason, I don't know, it's weird. Now the one thing I can't show you on a video is how steep this is. Like this is not at all comfortable to walk up. And I, I wasn't sure if pigs were gonna be willing to do it either, but they will. If there's an easier way, they take, take the easier way, but there are some trails up and down some pretty steep parts of this. So that's been good to see. All right, I'm gonna shimmy up this hill. So while I'm making my way up this hill, I'll stop to show you this insulator setup. 
I really like these. So that's a little pin that goes down and traps the wire behind it. So these not only work really well, but they're easier to change. With the standard yellow style, it's hard to get the, the, the wire out of there sometimes if it's under tension. So I like that pin style a little bit better. I didn't realize they made the pin style for T-posts as well. I've got some now, but if I knew it then, I probably just would have bought those instead of, instead of the, this style. Now this T-post is a little bit crooked, but it's working fine with the, with the standard ones. So you've got some wiggle room. These haven't given me, given me any problems at all. Okay, so I've walked up to the next corner. If I look back down the hill, that's where we came from. Yeah, there's the driveway in the corner down there. So it's a little over 100 feet to this corner. And I used an old busted water hose I had to support one of the corner strands, which it worked, but it seemed like a lot of work. So the other strand, I just screwed in this thing. These little spool looking things ended up being really useful. I used them in a lot of spots. So this just continues on down two strands, bottom strand pretty much as low as I felt like I could get it. And then another maybe eight inches higher. I think the pigs just heard me over here. They're coming to see us. They're pretty friendly. I wouldn't say I completely trust them, but they're pretty friendly. Y'all coming up to see me? You guys are pretty good hill climbers. Usually when I'm walking the fence line, they'll follow me around. Okay, there's the view back where we came from. Yep, so back there's where we came from. Right below me is their pen. And then there's this mess here, which I can't even remember why I, why I did it this way. I think it was when I was, I was wanting to add those. Don't bite me. So just a little ways down from there, this is where the fence splits. I've got it set up to where if I'm troubleshooting a problem, I can just connect half of the fence at a time. So this is the farthest point from the charger in each direction. Good for troubleshooting. I'm gonna keep walking down towards the house. Okay, so I just walked down this way. This is the next corner. This was an existing corner with the, with the barbed wire fence. So I just screwed a couple of those in and called it a day. I added a couple step-in posts along the way. This part's worked work just fine. And then right down the hill from that corner is this corner that's closest to the house and, and this is their favorite bathroom. That is a hickory nut he just picked up. Got lots and lots and lots of hickory nuts. And it is crazy to listen to them crunch into them. It is not easy to get into a hickory nut. See if we can catch a nice chomp. Man, it stinks over here. I I'm too close for this sort of behavior. All right, we're gonna back up a little bit. So this corner is the reason why they started being friends with the chickens so quickly, I think, because just to the left is the coop where I raised this, the little birds this year. So as soon as they started free ranging, right here were the pigs to hang out with them and provide a bunch of partially digested grain So that's really about it for the fence, isn't it? It's been easy. One of the biggest things I've learned about pigs is that their eyesight is terrible. Or it's probably not terrible, it's just, it's very different from ours. So I first noticed it whenever I was feeding them eggs. I would throw an egg in towards them and they wouldn't have a clue where it went. They rely on their nose to see. So I, like whenever I'm walking up to them, I always try to, you know, talk to them or something to let them know I'm coming because they're, they're easily startled. So whenever I opened up these bigger pastures for them to, to roam around in, I walked them all the way around the perimeter. Kind of, well, kind of just like we did. Just walked them around the perimeter and they would, they would always take some time to find the fence and know where it was at. And once they had their boundaries, they, they've, they've seemed very happy inside of those boundaries. I haven't really caught them like testing the fence or trying to get out of the fence or trying to find a way around the fence. They seem pretty happy in the area I've given them. If one of them does get out, I feel sure it's gonna be 
like an accident because a lot of times when they're moving or especially when they're laying down, they have no idea what their body's about to do. They'll just plop down. So I could definitely see one muddy day or something, one of them slipping and ending up on the other side of the fence accidentally. And if they did, I think they'd just stand there waiting to get back in. But if not, I think, you know, with a little bit of food, and a little bit of patience, it wouldn't be hard to get them to go where you need them. So I edited the video up to this point and I wrote down about 400 things I forgot to mention. So I'll try and talk through them real quick. This is the view from my porch. So let's go over to that tree right there. So right around this tree and down the hill here is where I've been spraying them down and giving them water and trying to keep them cool. So this area is seeing the worst damage and it's totally on purpose. I could do a whole separate video on the drainage issues I've got on my property and how this is actually a good thing. But right up here, I've still got that barrel with the nipple waterers. They hate it and don't want to use it. I smeared like half a jar of peanut butter on them one day. Still didn't help. So it is what it is. I don't mind watering them by hand. Okay, so across the path from our tree is this bush right here. And if you saw my last video, my first video with the pigs, this was their first hideout in here. There's what's left of their little swimming pool. So this whole area has pretty much been trampled down. And once I get the pigs out of here, it'll be extremely easy to come in behind and, you know, finish the job with a weed eater. So right down here, I don't know if it's a multi-floor rose or some, some huge bush with gigantic thorns. As soon as they got access to this area, they went right under it. And over time, it's gotten thinner and thinner. And you can see a big hole that they've dug. I don't know if they found a spring. It does look kind of wet up there. It would still be difficult to get back in there and have a look because of all the thorns. But coming out from that area like a spider web are just a million little trails through all of this thick stuff. There's some going up the hill right there. Actually, there comes a pig. You want to come down and see us? I usually give them a little food before dark, so they're probably hungry. You know, to be honest, having pigs has kind of been a little bit boring because like I said, it was either raining heavily or a hundred degrees and like they don't deal with the heat well at all. And I thought I knew that and was kind of prepared for that, but it was still surprising. So they'd come out in the morning when I fed them and then they'd just go back into their hole and spend the whole day trying to stay cool. But today's temperature was much better and it's looking really good for the rest of August. So I'm hoping these guys will get to spend more time out and about and hanging out with me. They're pretty fun to have around. So that's kind of the state of their land clearing efforts. Still got like three months left. So I'm hoping as they get bigger, their destruction will get correspondingly larger. You know there's a barrel right over there that could give you a similar sensation, right? So I never really finished my thoughts on the fence energizer, and I actually bought two of these things. So none of my land gets a full day's sun. So I was worried about the battery staying charged on these, but I haven't had any problems keeping the one charged. So the second one hasn't really got much use. I need to, I need to swap it in just to keep its battery exercised, perhaps. Might as well test it. I was also imagining a scenario where I had one of, the, one of the fence energizers fail and then I'm stuck with pigs on the loose, I don't have a working fence energizer, and I'm here by myself. So I don't know, it just felt, it felt like the right choice to have a backup on site ready to go. If I knew what I know now, if I had the confidence that I have now, I would probably just buy one of them. And right below this one here, this is the spot where the two halves of my fence connect. 
So it's actually right up above here. That's that tree I was showing you where one half of the fence is on the left and the other half is on the right and they don't connect. So this is where I would make or break that connection. And also when I was talking about things getting nasty earlier, I should mention how I'm feeding them. I just have some of the large rubberized bowls and dump the feed into that. So while my answer is to move around to different spots, another solution is just to get a feeder that doesn't let them get feed everywhere. Just thought I'd clarify that. So another thing that's ended up working out pretty good is this set of alligator clips I got on Amazon that I connected to the fence energizer. Makes it easy to connect and I haven't had any problems with any weird arcing or, or whatever. So it's just another cheap Amazon purchase. And I'll throw, you know, I'll throw links for a bunch of crap in the description. Might as well try to make some affiliate money, right buddy? Speaking of toxic affiliate marketing, if you're buying any of this Premier One netting, it is cheaper on their website than it is on Amazon. I almost wasted like 50 bucks because I had followed somebody's link wanting to help them out with some affiliate revenue. And I just happened to check the Premier One website because I wanted to make sure I was getting the right part number. And then I realized it's like significantly cheaper. So just watch out folks. All that link in the description crap is for them, not you. Always remember that. So another thing I wanted to mention is that I didn't do any proper splicing. When I needed to connect two wires, I just wrapped them around one another a couple times and called it good. This is not a high tensile installation. It's tight enough to stay where I need it. And that's all that really matters. And so far so good. Like I haven't had any weird fence problems that came down to you know, bad connections from this sort of nonsense. I think if I knew that pig's eyesight was so bad, I would consider like the poly braid or the tape type of electric fences. I wonder if pigs would be able to see that easier. I think they see blacks and whites best from what I read. So maybe the maybe a poly braid or tape would be better than the 14 gauge wire, I'm not sure. I've never seen them hit the fence and I felt like they didn't see it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like they can see the fence. I'm just kind of thinking out loud here, wondering if some of the other options might be better. So if you're looking for pig fence info, and you've made it to this point of the video and not caught on. I don't know what in the world I'm talking about here. I'm pretty sure I've used a lot of these products in the wrong way. I bought some of these porcelain insulators with the screw. I still don't know how to install them properly because everything I've tried, they end up, the screw part ends up breaking free. I don't, maybe there's a tool you need to put them in. I don't know. This is working fine and I'm not too worried about it. The same goes with the rest of the fence. Like it's doing what I need to do. And I just don't think there's any way I could plan out this fence ahead of time and buy the exact right insulators and the exact right products for every corner and all of that. I kind of just bought a little bit of everything and hoped I would have what I needed. And it kind of worked out. I ended up with a lot of spare stuff, but that's good. I'm ready to fix any problem that might come up, you know? So when I was just getting started doing my research, about what I wanted to do. I think the biggest breakthrough came whenever I found somebody who was raising pigs in a context very, very similar to mine. Like for mine, it was uh, Red Tool House, a channel here on YouTube that's got a bunch of pig videos. They're not that far from here over in West Virginia and they're in the hills. Like their videos were the first time where I really saw pigs on hills, like serious hills. And I started to believe that it might work in the little mess that I've got here. So I'll leave a link to that channel. I'll also leave a link to Casey Farms. He's mostly on flatland, but his, uh, like he's got really neat shelters and stuff for rotational grazing. He's got an amazing new farrowing barn and they raise the little Cooney Cooney pigs. And that's really what I've been thinking a, a lot about lately is what to do next with pigs. You know, this is gonna be a lot of pork. So I don't really need to turn around and raise more next year. So this might be a good time to switch over to slower growing breeds that are smaller. Like if you're not familiar with the little Cooney Cooney pigs, like they only get to about 150 pounds. Like the size of these pigs is the biggest those would ever get. And they take like a year and a half or two years to grow. So a year and a half to two year time frame would be perfect for me. And because they grow slower, you know, the, the harvesting window, the, the butchering window is longer. So whether it's the Cooney Cooneys, there's also the American Guinea hog and several other breeds that are supposed to be able to survive mostly on forage. You barely feed them. They're little pigs and they grow slow. And I think they, they might really thrive in this environment. And if you remember back to my original goal here 
of getting this whole hillside cleared off. Okay, so if you remember back to my primary goal, which is getting this hillside clear and maybe keeping it clear, maybe a handful of little cooney cooney pigs would be perfect for this. I don't know. I'm still trying to, still trying to decide. So I think that's where I'll end this one, folks. Lots more to talk about, but I think we've covered enough ground for today. Things are going great with the pigs, and I'll keep you updated.